I'm gonna lay down my burden Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside I'm gonna lay down my burden Down by the riverside Study war no more I'm gonna lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Oh yes, down by the riverside Down by the riverside I'm gonna lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Study Study war no more, ain't gonna study war no more, study war no more, I ain't gonna study war no more, ain't gonna study war no more, study Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Ain't gonna let injustice turn me round, turn me round. Turn me round, ain't gonna let injustice turn me round. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. See their faces, say their names. Sean Matarosa. See their faces, say their names. Javier Ambler, see their faces, say their names. And to know, till all the jails are empty and all the bellies fill, till no one hurts or steals or lies and no more blood is spilled. God has work for us to do, God has work for us to do, till God's will is done and all things are made new. God has work for us, work for us to do, till age and race and gender no longer separate till pulpit press and politics are free of greed and hate god has work for us to do god has work for us to do till god's will is done and all things are made new God has work for us, work for us to do, work for us to do. God has work for us to do. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Christ Church. It's been a tough week for many of us. For those of you who don't know, our beloved Sexton Juan Restrepo, who literally did the greeting a week ago, died Monday after a car accident. So those of us who knew and loved him have really been struggling this week to try to make sense of everything. 
We're going to be sending out some information on a memorial service and on ways that you can honor Juan and help his family financially shortly. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, um, I for one miss being together today. I could use a hug, uh, but I think we all know that Juan is with us in spirit and it'll be a good time to embrace him virtually as we worship together. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Good morning. Today's reading comes from a letter that Paul wrote to the earliest Christians in Greek cities that were a part of the Roman Empire. 
located in the middle of what is today Turkey. These words became an important foundation for the principles of equality in democratic societies. I read from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 26 through 28. You are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you were baptized into Christ and are clothed with the Christ. Among us, therefore, we are neither Jew nor Greek, neither slaves nor free people, neither male nor female, we are all one in Christ Jesus and heirs to the promises of God. Amen. Today we are going to read a book that we really love in our house called Love the World. And we love it because it has a great message and it also has really colorful pictures. Ready? Love the World. Love the World. Love your face. Love your space. Love your nose. Love your toes. Love your eyes. Love your size. Love your walk. Love your talk. Love giving a hand. Love taking a stand. Love yourself. Love the world. Love the bees. Love the trees. Love your ears and love your tears. Love your hair. Love your flair. Chelsea, help. Love being kind. Love using your mind. Come here. I wish you didn't make a robot. Love making art. Love sharing your heart. Love yourself. Love the world. Love your giggle. Love your wiggle. Love your grin. And love your skin. Love the land. Love the sea. Love the earth. Love you and me. Love yourself. Love the world. You will meet many people and go to many places. You can always find something to love about yourself, the world, and everyone in it. Love yourself and love the world. The end. Love Todd. Let's do a quick prayer. Dear God, remind us that in this world where there seems like there is so much hate, that love is the answer, loving ourselves, loving the world, and everyone in it, no matter whether they're similar to us or different from us. Amen. Good morning. I'm Bola Lawrence, and I'd like to talk briefly about what Christ's Church means to me and why I support it. At the time I found Christ's Church about six to seven years ago, I was on the verge of losing my faith. I had been to several different churches and something was always missing from the, my experiences at these churches. When I got to Christ Church, I was unreservedly welcomed without judgment or expectations. I felt at home and was encouraged to bring my whole self, warts and all, to church. It quickly became clear to me that Christ Church is about love, acceptance, and commitment to making our tiny corner of the world a better place. Christ Church continues to teach me, just as Christ did, that there is light in each of us to be used to better our community, whether it is championing the cause of the voiceless, feeding and sheltering the poor, standing up against social injustice and racism, or providing commitment and comfort to those who grieve. For the opportunities Christ Church gives to me to be of service to my community, I am thankful and grateful, and that is why I give and support Christ Church. Thank you.
You know my words before they're said. You know my need, and I am fed. You give me life. You know my ways, my strength, my path for all my days. My strength, my path for all my days. During this month of pride, I think back some 38 years to a conversation I was having with my dad in his office, in the pastor's office, where I was sitting on his couch trying to summon up the courage to say what was inside of me. Finally, um, I said, Dad, I think I'm gay. And he responded back, Mark, your mother and I love you no matter what, and God loves you no matter what. And looking back on it now, I realize that with his words and his actions, he helped turn the key of acceptance that unlocked uh, the gifts that were inside of me so that I could realize my dream of helping change and heal the world through music. This morning, we get to hear from two incredible people. Katie is... Uh, a senior in high school just graduating, she's gay, and Ansel, who is graduated from college and is a trans man, uh, both of them can speak to us about what it means to be in a place that helps nurture your gifts and helps you grow into the person you are meant to be. And it's my prayer that Christ Church continues to be the place where all of our gifts are nurtured uh, for the healing and wholeness of the world. My name is Katie Albar Cluck, and as I make this video, I am in the middle of my high school graduation. Um, I am 17 and going to Rutgers, New Brunswick in the fall. Very proud of that. I had a very strange experience growing up because I am from a community that does not accept people's differences. If you are not straight, white, and cisgender, you were treated like an outsider. I struggled a lot with the idea that I was gay, but right before high school, I came out. And I'm very fortunate. My parents are both very accepting, and well, my friends were too. But that didn't really change my community's opinion, because they had evolved to no longer be outright angry at differences, but they were instead 
kind there was a secret agreement between everybody where they said you can be who you are just don't scream it so it was this sort of thing where it was like you could be gay but not too gay and i felt that a lot growing up as an asian kid and having coming from a biracial family he said you're allowed to be asian but just don't talk about it a lot and i really took that to heart and i was very hurt by that i felt like I was wrong and but I knew despite being gay I was a child of God I am now in a place with myself as well as this community I am reminded that I'm not a child of God despite being gay being gay is just one of God's many gifts that he has given me every week we say no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey you are welcome here. This community is a reminder that there are no conditions on acceptance. I choose to bring that with me wherever I go and just spread that love. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, be proud of yourselves and give and the gifts God has given you. Our differences are not detriments. They make our world a better place. Whenever I was upset about how I was treated differently than my peers growing up and when I get upset now at how I'm treated and how sometimes things still stink, my mother always told me and she still tells me, if we were all the same, the world would be a much more boring place. She's absolutely right. You should not dull your shine for anyone. God has given you these gifts for a reason. Use them. Hi, I'm Ansel. I think as a queer and trans person that finding places where you can grow and express yourself is really important. So much of the world at large isn't accepting or safe for queer people. And if I'm somewhere that I know isn't accepting or where I don't know what the atmosphere is, it can take up a lot of mental space for me. Sometimes it feels like there's kind of a filter over everything I do, whether it's you know how I talk or how I behave or what I say, where I'm constantly kind of having to think about how I'm presenting and how that'll be perceived by people and what the consequences will be. Um, but if I'm somewhere that I know is open and is affirming, I can kind of like take all of that and just put it on a shelf for a little while and just clear that mental space in my mind. And when I'm somewhere like that, it can give a lot more opportunities to just be yourself in a more authentic way and to try things that you wouldn't otherwise and meet new people and form you know, genuine connections. And I think these are things that everybody really deserves and needs. So I think that, you know, safe communities where you can take opportunities to grow and try new things are really important for queer people, whether you're, you know, questioning your identity or whether you've been out for like years and years. And I think when we don't find these places, there's a lot that can really be lost. Good morning. Our annual meeting is Tuesday night at 7 p.m. over Zoom. An email will go out this week with a link to that meeting so that you can participate. If you have not gotten any emails saying that we're going to have a Zoom meeting this week, please contact the church office by emailing Brenda at Brenda, dot, Brenda at ccsnj.org to make sure that you're on the email list. We need to have a quorum of 75 people, so please plan to attend that meeting. Also on Monday and Wednesday nights of this week, the movie 13th will be shown. In a two-part series, the first half will be shown on Monday night and the second half will be shown on Wednesday night with discussion to follow. And lastly, we are planning a memorial service for our congregation, for Juan. 
which will be held next weekend, either Saturday or Sunday afternoon, most likely. Um, we have not finalized the details on that, but you will be getting an email with information about that this week. We hope to have it outdoors in the back parking lot at the church. Everyone will be asked to bring their own chairs with them, and we will socially distance and wear masks. Please stay tuned for more information in an email. And lastly, our prayer this morning is taken in part from the First Congregational Church in Danbury, Connecticut. It was used when they became an open and affirming church. Let us pray. Creator of all, on this first day of summer, we give you thanks for the rain that waters the earth and for the plants that are thriving and growing because of it. We give you thanks for our fathers, grandfathers, and father figures on this day, grateful for the love and connections that we share, even as we acknowledge that our relationships may not always be what we wish them to be. Today, we give you thanks for Juan, father of Daniel and beloved sexton of Christ Church, who is no longer with us. We mourn his death, even as we share memories and celebrate his life. We pray for Daniel, Rocio, and for our congregation as we adjust to life without Juan in our midst. We pray for all those whom we name to you now, those we name out loud and those we hold in our hearts, for those in need of healing, for those mourning loved ones, for those facing difficult decisions, for those who are lost and alone. We pray this day for Donna who had surgery on Friday and is still recovering from a stroke. We pray for Stephen who was admitted to ICU yesterday and for his family who is not able to be with him. We pray for Roz, a friend of the Kepners who had a stroke this week. And we pray with Christina for Dana who is going through a difficult time. And finally, on this Pride Sunday, we proclaim who we are. We are gay, we are straight, we are lesbian, we are bisexual, we are transgender, we are cisgender, we are gender fluid. We have many names and labels for what we are, but we know that you call us by one name, Beloved. Let us say it over and over and over again until we believe it. We are beloved. We are beloved. We are indeed beloved. We acknowledge that for many of your beloved children, especially those who are LGBTQ, church communities have been places of shame and suffering rather than homes of sanctuary and safety. May Christ's church be a sanctuary of safety. May we be your body on earth, loving and caring in the world. For we are, all of us, called by love, for the sake of love, to be love in this faith community and everywhere.
The gospel reading today was told in the context of people dividing the world between insiders and outsiders. I read from Luke 14, 17 to 23. Now a certain man prepared a great banquet and invited many guests. He sent a servant around to remind them right at the time of the banquet, saying, Come, for everything is ready. But the guests began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a property and I need to inspect it. Please excuse me. The second said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and need to try them out. Please excuse me. The third said, I've just gotten married. The servant returned and reported it all to his master. The owner became annoyed and ordered the servant, go out into the streets and bring in all of the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant did and there was still room. So the master said, scour the byways and the country lanes and invite them to the feast so that all of our tables will be filled. This was a historic week for LGBTQ people and for all Americans, as the Supreme Court ruled that you can no longer discriminate against people because of their sexual orientation or their sexual identity. The headlines fit hand in glove with our parable today. Jesus told this parable originally to remind his followers that in the kingdom of God, there is no inside and outside like we humans are given to distinguish. God's grace is expansive. It's we humans that are limiting. It's we humans that set up these boundaries. But we can't stop God's goodness from spreading farther and deeper than we would imagine. So the master in this story is about to give a big banquet, like you would give for a wedding. And the original people on the invite list are entitled, involved, and busy. Very busy, then is now, right? I can't come because so many conflicts that we've created in our overfilled lives. We'd like to come, but we have so many other things going on. You understand. So the master says, go back out again and bring in all of the lame and the blind, the poor, everyone begging in Penn Station and Battery Park, anyone that looks homeless or suffering from psychiatric disorders that you meet on the street that could use a good meal and some cheer. Go check the abandoned subway station near City Hall at night where lots and lots of poor people find temporary shelter and bring them in. So they do, and yet there is more room. So the master sends them out again just to search the lanes outside the village gates. People that might be in need, we don't even know what kind of need they might have yet. But when you get there, you will know. It will be obvious. And your job is just to invite them to the party. This week, the Supreme Court was asked to decide if it was legal to discriminate against gay workers or transgendered workers. An historic decision that included conservative uh, Ju Chief Justice John Roberts and also Justice Neil Gorsuch. They ruled six to three that you cannot discriminate against gays or transgendered people. And the precedent that they cited was Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In the Civil Rights Act, we prohibited discrimination in our country based on race. But the legislators went further and added Title VII that prohibited discrimination by sex. At the time, the legislators were only thinking about women. It didn't seem fair that you could deny a woman a job just because she was a woman. So they made it explicitly illegal in that legislation. They weren't thinking about gay and lesbian kids in 1964. They weren't even on the radar. And they sure as hell weren't thinking about transgendered people. Back in 1964, we didn't even really have a category for thinking about transgendered people as I remember, since I was in kindergarten at the time. And our first books just had Dick the boy and Jane the girl and the dog Spot, and that was about it. Boys were over here, girls were over there, and you had the pet. End of story. Indeed, 
Jump forward to 1996 when our relatively educated church in our relatively educated town in our relatively educated state of New Jersey came to talk about whether we should bless gay unions and support gay families. We didn't really possess the categories for thinking about transgendered people. But we did vote to bless gay and lesbian unions and to support gay and lesbian families. We had a big celebration and wrote the open and affirming organization of our churches that sent them a statement of faith that we'd written. We were ready to be a rainbow flag congregation. I get a call back from the open and affirming folks. They say to me, Reverend, your statement doesn't say anything about transgendered people. I only had to think for a second before I responded, and we aren't going to amend our statement at this time either. Because even in the late 90s, when we had discussions about sexual orientation and how our gender orientation happens, and what an unbelievably complex phenomenon it really is, it was more than most of our folks could really understand. And we had almost no examples of transgendered people on TV or in the movies or in literature just 25 years ago. I recognized that we'd reached the limits of our moral imagination at that time, and we would have to await another a time, a time like, say, now, when the concept is not so befuddling, and we're ready to replace our fear at what we don't understand about transgendered people by simply listening to transgendered people tell us about their identity and how it developed and why it's important to them. The court this week apply the same logic that prohibits sex discrimination to gays and lesbians and transgendered people as well. The Civil Rights Act says it's unlawful for an employer to fail or refuse to hire or to discharge or otherwise to discriminate against any individual because of such individual's sex. There are no exceptions listed to that rule. So even two of the conservative justice applied that rule to sexual orientation. They said, if you can't fire someone because of their sex, then you cannot fire them because they have a same-sex marriage. You wouldn't fire somebody because they have a heterosexual marriage. And this is still important because we've had gay and lesbian families at Christ Church that were discriminated against simply because one of the parents had a photograph of their family on their desk at work and their supervisors determined that they set a negative example for younger people that they were responsible for. Whoa, right here in New Jersey and not all that long ago either. And likewise, the justices argued, if you're a man and you get fired simply because you dress as a woman, that's unlawful too. Back in 1964, I am sure that our legislators could not have imagined that they would be extending equality to gays, to lesbians, or transgendered people, but they did. The master in the parable goes to the byways and the country lanes to find other people to invite to the table of grace. People we don't really even know who they are yet, because we aren't really even sure about who they will be. And we are extending to them full rights, full privileges, because they're accepted for who they are, and they have a place at the table with everyone else. And I know it's late, but I want you to know that you are invited to the party. Signed, God. So come on in, there's room at the table. And you are a child of God. You are lovable, you are worthy of love, and we've made a place for you before we even met, before we even knew we needed to think about you, before we even thought to invite you. Because God's grace is like that. It's expansive, far-reaching, way more inclusive than any of us who spend most of our lives surrounded by people pretty much just like us. But not so with God. It's a big world, a diverse world, and God loves all of us 
in the very particularity of who we are, God draws us all together through divine love. St. Paul put it so radically to those early Christians in the Roman Empire. Among us, he said, there is neither Jew or Gentile, neither free people or slaves, neither male or female, for we're all clothed in the one garment of the Christ. We have a new identity as Christians that transcends our particular identities and binds us together in compassion and love and humility each of us looking to the fulfillment of the other. And this love that we share harmonizes us. It synchronizes us. And the beautiful thing about it is that when we encourage one another mutually, we all realize our potential. We bloom. That's the promise. When more and more of us bloom, new beautiful people will emerge that we can't actually even see from here. But our great-grandchildren will see them. So we lean forward into our families. And there are so many different versions of family. Some of us are all from one ethnic group, one race. Some from two or three different ethnic groups. Some of us are heterosexual. Some of us have two moms. Some of us have two dads. We have blended families. We have adoptive families, transgendered family members. We have queer family members that are still questioning. All of us are in search of finding ourselves, our place at the table, seeking to be rooted in something eternally meaningful like God's love and acceptance and grace. So this is a big day and a big decision for all of us by the Supreme Court. We just identified a few more groups of people that need to come on in and join the party and find a place at God's table. And make no mistake, it will make a big difference in the future. One thing I remember from 1998 when we became an open and affirming church at Christ Church just before we voted as a congregation. I heard from quite a few people that hadn't said much in public. So we went around and asked them privately where they stood on the issue. One answer I heard a lot back then was this. If we can't discriminate against gays and lesbians at my office, why should we discriminate against them in my church? Suddenly the moral argument flipped from the previous era. And laws have a way of shaping cultural mores and attitudes. They make it easier to change hearts, especially for the next generation. And I think about that a lot now that I have 10 grandchildren and I'm watching them grow. Some of them may turn out to be gay or lesbian or transgendered. And I know this, I love them for who they are and I hope you'll love them for who they are too. And I hope we can build a world where we can all find our place. And I'm sorry it's taken us so long as a people. And I'm sorry that it's taken Christians so long to accept gays and lesbians. We still have 68 countries with explicit laws criminalizing gays and lesbians and transgendered people. And probably 90% of all Christian churches worldwide still make gays, lesbians, and transgendered people live in the closet. But we lift them up all today and hope for a better future. But I want you to know that you're invited to the party. And it may be late, but God has a place for you and your family at the table. And it may be a while before the messenger gets to your neck of the woods, but I want you to know that an invitation is on the way. Your beloved, and may God's strength and hope reside in you. Amen.
one stands alone and will stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands. Every week for the past 25 years, our sexton Juan Restrepo welcomed us at Christ Church with his warm smile. And he would send us on our way with another warm smile as he cleaned up behind us all. English was Juan's third language behind Spanish and Italian. And he used all three languages in his day job. As we close today, I want to bid him farewell in a fourth language that he will recognize from the Mass. Requiem eternum, Dona Juan, Domine, et lux perpetua, luceat is, ite in pace. And may peace also be with you and your family this day. Amen. In your sadness and From all the pain, it seems there's no relief. We will hold you until the storm subsides and draw the circle.
Hi, my name is Juan Restrepo, and uh, I welcome back to Christ Church. Thank you.